Hi there, this is Eugene from Reflective Learning and in this video we're going to look at how to go about interpreting the Reflective Learning Analytics for either an individual or a group of learners that would have submitted the assessment. You would have received a, a teacher login that, from us that you can then go about uh, logging in to see the analytics. So what you need to do is go to lms.reflectivelearning.co.za click on get started now and type in your teacher login details. So on this first dashboard you'll see that there are a list of classes that you would have given to us to create the logins with. You'll see a menu system down left hand side and a list of individual learners within that class that have written the assessment. We're going to be working with grade 9a today so I'm going to click on that and go find one learner in particular. So if you remember from our previous videos, we've divided maths into seven different conceptual threads, numbers, fractions, patterns, algebra, and so on. And these are the results for this learner across those seven different threads along with their overall achievement. But most useful for understanding where a learner sits within in each given thread is this graph over here, which we're going to speak through. So this is the numbers thread which is divided into 20 what we call conceptual landmarks. These are concepts that learners have to have mastered by the time they have finished um, up to the level which they're being tested in order to then progress to the next uh, phase of work. So you'll see that every conceptual landmark has multiple circles. So what does that mean? So we're currently looking at the high school assessment and within that the innermost circle uh, shows the, a, a grade 3 level, the next circle shows a grade 6 level, the next circle after that grade 9 level. So this learner over here, the green shows a level that they've mastered, a yellow shows where they've made a careless mistake and a red one would show where they haven't mastered the level. So this learner for example has mastered grade 3 level in counting numbers, they've also mastered grade 9 level in counting numbers but they've made a careless error at grade 6 level counting numbers. So those uh, benchmarking levels are slightly different for each assessment. So as I said for high school it's grade 3, grade 6 and grade 9. For primary school it's grade 1, grade 3 and grade 6. And for foundation phase it's grade 1, 2 and 3. So you might also notice that some of these uh, conceptual landmarks down this end don't have multiple circles. That's because those concepts would have only been taught at higher levels or higher grades. And so, for instance, comparing integers, we're not going to assess at a grade 3 level if they only learn it later on. So the whole th numbers thread gives you a great idea of what concept is going to impact the next one thereafter. And so a learner, for instance, may struggle with some of these concepts down over here because they haven't actually mastered it at a high, a high enough level down on this side. So what does it mean that a learner has mastered counting numbers at a grade 9 level? Well if you go a little bit further down on the page you'll get comment based feedback that explains every concept and uh, what a learner has mastered and if they haven't mastered it, what, what do they need to be able to achieve in order to master it at that level? This is a great way to help learners understand what is expected of them uh, within maths all the way through whether it's from grade 1 to grade 9 and further and beyond. So this same visual and word based feedback is given for every thread so you get to see a, a really detailed picture of a learner's conceptual understanding within mathematics but then also helps to translate it into a, a fashion that they're under, able to understand their own learning journey. So along with their conceptual understanding we also measure six what we call cognitive performance indicators. And I'm going to go into another user just to show you what that looks like. So these are factors uh, that impact student achievement within mathematics and uh, so that includes mathematical mindset, motivation, metacognition, perseverance and pace and precision. And so as a learner uh, goes through the assessment and they complete it, this data is automatically drawn up as well. Lastly, if you want to print out a report, if you go up to the very top and you click download PDF, 
you'll have a PDF uh, pop-up okay make sure that you've got your pop-up blocker off so if we just go and click that you'll see it will pop up into the next screen once we've clicked and there we go so your report will pop up in there and then you can print it from that so that's how to go about uh, analyzing a or interpreting an individual learner's assessment what does it look like on a group level so particularly for for teachers it's going to be useful to understand what your class looks like as a whole so we're going to look at class overview and if we click on that and we go to our grade 9 a class you'll see five learners that have completed the assessment at varying levels so this is the overall achievement that you would have seen from an individual point of view but you now get an idea of where the spread of a class looks like benchmarked at grade 3 grade 6 and grade 9 level further down you'll then be able to see it being drawn into the caps levels that are required for for reporting so next we want to look a little bit deeper at the information in order to better understand what these learners might be struggling with so we go back to our main menu click on class threads and you'll see that this bar graph gives you a nice understanding of what these learners are able to accomplish perhaps some of the weaker points maybe it's stuff that they're doing really well and achieving well on but even more importantly these graphs down below give you an understanding of what proportion of learners sit within any sphere of achievement so at the moment we have 20 percent of learners that are able to do numbers at a grade 1 to 2 level you have 40 percent at a grade 6 to 8 level and 40 percent that have achieved grade 9 level this gives you a much better picture of where a class stands and perhaps where you need to target uh, either your teaching or your remediation thereafter but it goes even further if we go back and we click on for instance the numbers conceptual landmark you can now see the data broken down into every landmark and where the learners sit on that so that is a quick run through of the reflective learning diagnostics analytics and hopefully through this whole process you'll begin to understand much better where your learners gaps are within their conceptual understanding understand how far back they go really importantly and help you target those gaps so learners can achieve and excel in mathematics again if you have any questions you're more than welcome to to send us an email otherwise thanks very much